Welcome to the Newsmakers Podcast. I'm Billy Hollowell, and this is a show where we go behind the headlines every day to bring you an interview with a pastor, entertainer, politician, or other notable news figure. And this is a show, again, it's daily, but it's based on our weekly TV show, which is also called Newsmakers. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel and also on our YouTube page. And on this show, every day, we dive deep. It's a little more longer form with one of the people who you will often see on our Newsmakers show or across the CBN News platforms. On today's Newsmakers, Missouri State Representative Ben Baker is facing the unthinkable after the tragic murder of his daughter and son-in-law, Natalie and Davey Lloyd. They were serving as missionaries in Haiti when they were recently murdered. He joins us to share his family's story, why he wants his daughter's story told, and so much more. With no further ado, here is Representative Ben Baker. I want to thank you for joining me today. I know this has been an incredibly difficult time for you and your family. You know, I wanted to start with Natalie and Davey. You know, what would you want people to know about them? Sure. So, you know, they were special people, exceptional in so many ways, Um, very mature beyond their years. Uh, And it played out in their life. And, um, You know, this is something that has been the most difficult thing we've ever faced, but we want to tell the story of Davey and Natalie, and uh, their example is just so unique and um, powerful. You know, in a time where there's such a contrast, their life was such a contrast to, to our current culture, where people are so caught up in self and worried about all the things that really don't matter. And Davey and Natalie were completely sold out to the calling of God. Um, the ministry, and they were an example of selfless love um, toward people that even in ultimately in this situation did not return that love. Uh, But yet, you know, even when they were given the opportunity to come home, they decided not to because they wanted to make sure that the kids had somebody there. You know, the kids would have had nowhere to go if they would have left. Um, That's the kind of, um, you know, mentality they had. And it was just a a beautiful thing to see. You know, thinking about the fact that, you know, they, they were in Haiti, which anybody who's been watching the headlines knows how dangerous, as you were alluding to there, it is, it has been there and what has been going on. And you mentioned that selflessness. That was the first thing I thought about when I heard what happened, you know, was that here are these two young people who are sacrificing their lives very literally to be down there and to help people. And, you know, what, talk a little bit more about their inspiration. What led them into that? I know that Davies family um, has spent a lot of time in Haiti. Just talk a little bit about what led them there. Sure. So for Davey, you know, he grew up there. He was born in the States, but um, his father and mother have been missionaries there before he was born. And so it was his people. The people of Haiti were Davy's family. And, you know, Creole, Haitian Creole was his first language. Uh, and from a young child, you know, uh, David and Alicia will tell you that Davy had intention to, re- to, to be a missionary to Haiti, to, to stay there. Uh, you know, he had a long-term goal of, of, of uh, pioneering churches, planning churches in the outer areas of Haiti. That was kind of his long-term goal. Uh, so obviously his influence was his parents and, you know, God's touch on his life, uh, you know, from an early age gave his heart to Christ and, uh, the, you know, the rest is history. Natalie was very similar. You know, we, I've been involved in missions work um, from the time I was four years old. My grandfather's a missionary in Guatemala City. Uh, I've done a lot of missions work around the world, India, Africa. Uh, never been to Haiti. I planned to go once Davy and Natalie were there, just hadn't had the opportunity yet. Um, and so I think some of that rubbed off on my kids, you know, and I've always taught my children that, uh, the the will of God is the absolute, you know, most important thing that you could pursue in your life, no matter where that takes you, you know, and then later we had to deal with, um, you know, the fact that Natalie chose missions and even in a dangerous place, but it was something that we still supported. It was something that I believe in that principle, uh, yet I don't understand all of this, how it has turned out and uh, and may not completely understand it until I get to heaven. But I still try to trust that God is sovereign and he has a plan that's greater than ours. 
Um, and so, you know, her influence was that, of course, in Bible school, it was something that she uh, had a, a heart for missions and wanted to pursue that, and especially children. Uh, and again, that played out in, in their ministry there. You know, the, the selflessness with which they operated and with which your family has operated is is really incredible. And it's very, as you said, countercultural. You know, in the position that you're in as a politician, obviously, you know, what happened became a very big news story. And so the layers of anybody going through this, how difficult that is, then the added layer of the attention on it, you know, international headlines. How how did you sort of cope with both of those things, the event itself, finding out about it, and then dealing with that extra layer of so many people, I'm sure, reaching out, knowing about it because of the scope? It's been unbelievable, uh, the just overwhelming how many people have been reached with this. Uh, and even the very next day, you know, knowing that media were going to be asking and wanting interviews and all of that, you know, I told my wife, it's completely up to you how we want to handle this. I don't want to cause any more added stress than we already have. Uh, but we prayed about it and we both decided that we wanted to tell this story every opportunity that we could. Now, that doesn't mean we took every interview. We, you know, we tried to use discernment with that. But it's really amazing that even in the ones, you know, uh, where you would think it could be and would be twisted uh, in a political way or whatever, it hasn't been. Uh, not to say that there hasn't been a few news outlets and places that, you know, got things wrong or, you know, had a little bit of a slant to it. But, you know, it was amazing that this is a story that you, you can't argue with. You can't argue with this kind of devotion and love uh, toward people and that selflessness. And, and so we decided we wanted to, to take every opportunity to do that. It has been overwhelming. Uh, I still haven't been able to catch up on all the, the phone calls and messages and emails and all the things. But right now, I mean, we're getting stacks of cards in our mail every day from people around the world that we don't even know that are reaching out, just saying that this story touched their hearts, this story touched their lives. I've already heard of several instances of people uh, coming to know Christ as a result of this. Um, and wow. it's just, it's a powerful thing that, you know, I, it's, though it's hard for us right now, I, I believe that this is the beginning of something powerful in this generation. This generation has never seen you know, we've read of, of Jim Elliott and of Lib Elizabeth Elliott. We've read the, the Fox's Book of Martyrs. But this is a, a, a vivid modern day example of people who gave their lives for the gospel. And I think this generation, it's, it's going to have a powerful impact on this generation. You won't see, very rare is that you see somebody the ages of Davy and Natalie who had that kind of mentality. And I think it's an inspiration to many. And I've already heard that from hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, so, you know, somebody mentioned it at the memorial service that they believe this is a rallying cry for this generation and will inspire missionaries to go and inspire people to give their lives for the gospel's sake. And, um, you know, that's exactly what Davy and Natalie would want. They didn't like attention. They didn't like being in the spotlight and, you know, Unfortunately, sometimes being in the position that I am, that's just a part of it sometimes, but they loved people um, and it was so evident in their life. Yeah, I mean, you don't see many, you know, 50, 60 year olds going out and doing what they were doing, you know, again, putting their life on hold, anything they wanted to do here, going there and devoting themselves to help people in a crisis situation, in a dangerous situation. I cannot underscore that enough you know, how selfless that is. How have you, I mean, you are incredibly strong. You know, I've seen even the messages you posted talking about, you know, thanking the people who lined up to honor Natalie and Davey. Um, and it was just really moving to see, but how have you kept your faith and your hope alive in the middle of what really is a parent's worst nightmare? I believe it's, it's just having that foundational relationship with the Lord. I, I can't, I can't imagine doing this or even attempting to do this without that connection and that relationship. You know, every difficulty that I've faced in life, I think that foundational understanding of who God is, that he is sovereign, that our life is in his hands is something that has undergirded every difficulty that I face. Of course, this is the this is the, the the most difficult thing we've by far we've ever faced. My wife and I and our family, 
Um, but you can literally feel the strength. And, and that's something that I've never experienced before to this level is the, the thousands, if not millions of people praying, uh, the people supporting and how God somehow will give you strength in all of this is just, it's a remarkable testimony of, of what faith really means, you know, and the storms of life are something that everyone faces, but the deeper your foundation is, the stronger you can withstand the winds and the storm. Um, and so, you know, that's a part of this message to people, anyone who will listen is that, uh, we're, you know, other people have faced unbelievable tragedy as well. And I know people of faith has as well. And you read about those things, but this time it is very real to us and, and just trying to lean into uh, his word, trying to lean into what we, we've always believed as true, uh, but experiencing it like this is a, is, a, is a totally different thing, especially like grief. You know, I have, I've taught about grief from a biblical perspective perspective. I taught Bible school for eight years, talked about grief, but there's nothing like actually experiencing it in, in this level. And so it's something that God is working in our lives in this, and I believe he's working in many, many others as well. You know, just, you've been so generous with your time, you know, just as, as a, a final question to you, you know, in situations like this, and I love being able to ask a question like this on, on a network like CBN, you know, you guys are coming past now, the shock of the event, the memorial, the all of those events that happen, and you're moving into the phase now uh, of sort of moving forward with, without them. How can people be praying for you and your wife and your family specifically as you move forward. Absolutely. So there's many decisions we still have to make. There's business things that we have to take care of. There's insurance, you know, uh, all kinds of things that are figured in on that end. But really what I would point people to is to pray for Haiti, pray for the people there. It's what Davy and Natalie would want. I want the mission work there with missions in Haiti to go on. Uh, I want David and Alicia to be able to continue that work there as difficult as it is. Uh, it's going to take a lot of strength for them, um, even more so than us that, you know, all of that is weighing in the balance right now with the situation of the mission work there. And, and the, it's just very precarious, but I want it to go on. I want the situation in Haiti to change. And I know it's not going to be all the things that people tend to point to with money and with power and, you know, all of those things, it's going to be hearts that are changed completely from the inside out. Um, and I believe that this is something that could be the, at the very cusp of, of that happening in Haiti um, and people turning around and that country turning around, watching what's taken place in Haiti is just heartrending because the people are so caught up in, in self and so caught up in power and money and, and the hate that is there and, and all of those things that I think nothing is too big for God. We've always said that, uh, but I, I still believe it. And I believe God can change this and turn it around in Haiti. And, and to me, that would be the most beautiful outcome of all this uh, that you could possibly ask for. So pray for the Lloyd family, pray for uh, Jude's family, the other young man that lost his life, his wife and kids. Pray for Jonas. He was a young man, 26 years old there, who had to see a lot of this play out and um, just saw very traumatic things take place. And he's really struggling as well in his heart and in his, in his life. And so they need prayer. And then pray that the, the support for the mission work there will continue as well. Yeah, I so appreciate you taking the time during such a difficult time. And, you know, we'll have you back as needed to discuss, you know, supporting, you know, the work that is going on there, whatever, whatever we can. We appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, Billy. I sure appreciate the opportunity. God bless. That's all for today's Newsmakers podcast. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of the show and also head over to the CBN News YouTube channel and the CBN News channel to watch Newsmakers every week. We'll see you soon.